and go. And smile. Ten seconds to the intro. Good evening and welcome to Greater Somerville on this election night special. Today is November 7th, 2017, and it is Municipal Election Day here in Somerville. My co-host tonight is none other than Carrie Rodriguez, the mom of three boys, the former chair of the Somerville Democratic City Committee, the founder of the statewide educational organization Massachusetts Parents United, MPU, and a stalwart Democrat. It is my pleasure to welcome to Greater Somerville, Carrie Rodriguez. It is a pleasure to be here on such a special occasion. We're, I love election night. We're going to have a blast tonight. We are. Yeah. And it is a very special night for our city, you know, seeing all of this civic engagement coming together in the culmination of a wonderful municipal election. I'm excited to see what happens. Well, let me do this so that we can kind of set the tone for tonight. We have our 28-minute show. And first, what I'm going to say, and I'm going to read it so you get this very clear. First and foremost, if you are watching this on television and have yet to vote, shut off the television, get off your ass, throw on a coat, and get out there and vote. It's not like we're asking you for an organ donation. It's, it's crucial. How's and, that? you know, I, I think you're, you're really, people are going to say, oh my gosh, Joe, that's a little much. <laughs> but seriously, folks, this is the, where the rubber meets the road. This is one of the most important things that you can do for your city and for yourself, frankly, because right. municipal elections are the elections that make the biggest difference in our communities. A lot of folks like to vote in the fancy presidential elections. Sure. You know, that seems very glamorous. It's all, it's almost like Hollywood. You know, and and they everyone do. gets caught up in the presidential or the senator, United States senator elections. Everybody gets caught up in that. That's right. But, folks, this is where it happens. This is where some of the most important decisions are going to be made about your community, your schools, who picks up your trash, who is actually going to make sure the streets are plowed. It's all tonight. And, and that's why you've got to do you? it now. Who protects you in your, the place where you live or where you work? It's the police and the fire and the DPW public safety. I mean, those are the things that are grassroots. Absolutely. Right? And the things that impact us directly, impacts our families directly. So if you haven't voted yet, now is the time. You still have a few minutes. Get off your butt. Get to the polls. And if you're not registered to vote in this city and you've lived here longer than a year, don't talk to me. <laughs> So let's do this. We're going to start Is that off. even possible? Yeah, like, I, I don't know, even think that's I possible. Because I, I kind of wander around Market Basket looking for people to talk to. But yeah. Yeah, and they're actually looking for you. That's why I would be surprised <laughs> if you have lived in the city of Somerville and you have not been registered to vote by somebody wandering the aisles of Market that's Basket. Right. That's right. Uh, I'd be surprised. Yeah. Well, we have a terrific uh, lineup of candidates this year from mayor to ward races to alderman at large to school committee. So we're going to talk, we're going to kind of dissect some of those, but do you want to call some predictions already? Yeah, I mean, I think we can call some races, too. Let's, let's do it. Uh, it's interesting to see just kind of as we take a look overall in the city, portions of the city where you see some contested races, where there has been, uh, you know, movement for change, where folks want to have a discussion about whether or not their wards are actually heading in the right direction. You know, that's kind of been confined to one area of the city in this particular cycle. Sure. That's been kind of interesting to see. But yep. uh, because of that, you know, there's some sections of the city where you know things are already decided because folks were running on a post so one could almost even an outsider who's not um, you know really into what's happening in the city the the machinations and all the development that's been going on if you looked at the geographic uh, the map of sit of the city and see where all of the development is happening it's not coincidental that that is where the races are also taking place, the heavy duty races, centered in around the eastern part of the city for, for Ward 1 in the Assembly Row area, Ward 2 in the Union Square area, Ward 3 in the Union Square area, and Ward 4, which actually touches parts of two of those sections. 
That's true. Touches two of those sections and also is kind of an area of the city where many folks have feeling or, or, or have felt a little bit forgotten. And it's kind of been an untouched portion of the city in sure. places. Uh, I'm a former resident of Ward 4. That is where my family comes from, several generations of my family. So, uh, you know, that's obviously where my heart is. It's, it's definitely a point of interest for me. And it's been interesting to see um, kind of the evolution of that ward. And uh, I'm kind of hopeful at this point that we're going to see some change. We're going to see a more vibrant conversation around the future of that ward. So it's not kind of the forgotten part of the city, then the Winter Hill section. Let's those start off. Morning. Let's start off and call the race in Ward 4 for school committee. We can do that. Andre Green will be our school committeeman in Ward 4. We can say that because he's running uncontested. This will be his second term as uh, a member of the Somerville School Committee. So congratulations to Andre. We're going to, we're going to, you know, these aren't, I mean, we labored over calling these early. It was a tonight. tough one. It, it was, was a, a tough, tough one. one. <laughs> Here's another tough one for you. In Ward 5, both incumbents, Alderman Mark Niedegang and school committee person Laura Patone, will be returning to their duties. Yes, so we feel comfortable in calling those races. We're very comfortable, and here it is. It's not even, the polls aren't even closed Look yet. at us, and we're already calling races. It's Snaps amazing. Snaps to Rodriguez, here you go. You well, want to call Ward 6? And well, let's say congratulations. To, right. because congratulations. We will say congratulations to those folks as they go on to serve yet another term as aldermen and as school committeemen. Uh, we also want to talk about, um, certainly down the road, you know, what it means to run unopposed as well. But let's get to calling the rest of the races. In Ward 6, uh, once again, we have another uncontested race. Lance Davis uh, will be reelected as alderman for Ward 6. And in school committee, uh, Paula O'Sullivan. Paula Thank O'Sullivan is now into her. She was um, ele first elected during a special election when Paul Bachman stepped away to go out to Amherst. So mm -hmm. congratulations, Paula. I don't, Paula, I don't know if they're afraid of you down in Ward 6 or they just think, I don't want that job. Yeah, it's but a tough job. School committee is a very difficult job. It is a difficult job, you know, and there's some calls in the city every now and then I hear rumblings about, you know, change the city charter, abolish the school committee, put an advisory council in. That's for another show, and yes. you're going to come back for that one. I would love to have a I conversation, elected school committee or appointed. I know you're just dying. We should to discuss start that. That, that is a conversation we should have. So let's move on. We have one more prediction we're going to make in the eastern part of Arlington, better known as Ward 7 in Somerville. We have two more people that will re be returning to their duties, and that's Aldi woman Katiana Ballantyne and school committee person Carrie Lynch Normand no relation. Yes, one of my fellow hockey moms. There you go. Yes, Summer congratulations, Will, Summer youth hockey. Whoop, whoop. There you go. So congratulations to all of those who have run unopposed and will be reelected back into the political pack known as City Hall Somerville. That's right. I do want to get into this conversation, Joe, Let's do around it. folks running unopposed and what that means in our city and what it should mean to candidates as well, because. Running unopposed, you, you might think it's kind of a, an easy way to kind of cruise to victory. And it could be if that's, you know, all the effort that you're going to put into it. Um, having no one run against you could be a validation of the work that you've done. But, you know, it's the question still remains whether or not you should still be engaging, you know, going door to door, engaging in the in the phone banking, the conversations, going through endorsement processes. You know, should you still be doing that? Do you run an active campaign if you are running unopposed? Well, you've had so much more experience in this than I have being the chair of the Democratic City Committee. But when I ran, it was important for me to face to face, see as many people as I could and ask for their vote and then listen to them and say, what do you think of my candidacy? Here's my platform. What do you think of my candidacy? All too often, I think candidates get caught up and, and to your point about running unopposed. And the question that I pose to you, how does a candidate know whether or not they're doing a good job unless they're out there asking the constituents, am I doing a good job? And frankly, how can you do a, go a good job if you are not actively engaged with the Correct. people you're representing? Yep. It all goes to your philosophy as a candidate, your philosophy as a politician. 
and frankly, your philosophy as a, an elected official and a, as a public servant and how you view your role. Um, I am not an elected official. Um, that's not really my bag. I always say, you know, I hate constituents. That would be a tough job for me. But for those serving in an elected capacity, you know, I, I'm saying I hate constituents because it's a tough job. Like, let's let's be real. You know, Being that, an elected that's official. That's fake news because you love the democratic process. I love the democratic process, but it, having folks, I mean, when you're an elected official, it's a tough job. Like, this sure is, is not glamour. This is not glamorous. I mean, I have members of my own family who have been elected officials. I have been working in campaigns forever to have to pick up the phone at 11 o'clock at night and listen to people who are very angry, very upset, solving problems. I mean everywhere you go if you're in the supermarket you're trying to go down to the Christmas tree shop and get some bargains down there you can't like you always have to be on and available that's exhausting yep. so I think it takes a specific kind of person who is able to be on all the time and to have that that thirst that need to want to serve to help and it's exhausting for some folks. I mean, it's it's really a 24-7 kind sure. of job. Sure. I don't think, you know, it takes a special person. I'm not that kind of person is what I'm saying. Well, we but. have, you know, we have what they call public servants. And and the public servants are easily recognizable. Mm -hmm. People, I, you know, I don't normally give plugs to elected officials, but we have a, a workhorse in this city known as Denise Provo. And Denise from for I, I forget how many years it is now as first as being employed by the city of Somerville as an attorney then as an alder person and running twice and being beaten back by the machine and then persisting what is the phrase and yet she persisted yeah, she, right she and persisted. still she persisted um, and then winning alderman at large and going on to state rep now there's what you call somebody who is a public servant constantly gets barraged. I walk with Denise sometimes in our own home ward of five. Questions after questions after questions after complaints. So I get what you're saying. And quite frankly, I have an on off button that I tend to shut off mm -hmm. when people say, you know, when you did that show about XYZ and I kind of go, I'm not on camera right now. Oh gosh, when I, I was on the radio for quite some time, my son that. Matthew, yep. who is now 10 years old, you know, just thinking, I'm picking up But if we're the person that has decided to publish this, I mean, you're constantly advocating for a segment of the population that Parents. you deeply care about. Kids. Because you a mom. That's right. You Struggle got, is real. You got three campaign managers in the making right there. Yeah, you ain't kidding. So we'll talk about your run for governor <laughs> Oh, later. gosh. <laughs> so, so there's one more group that I really want heartfelt thanks to and congratulations to, and those are the voters. The voters of this city who sometimes are faced with the fact that, well, what difference does it make if I vote? It matters. It should matter to, to me, and it matters to the candidates. Especially in these municipal races, exactly. where races really come down to a couple. And we've even seen historically in the city of Somerville, Bill White will tell you firsthand, uh, the president of the board of aldermen actually won at one point. I don't remember which race it was. Alderman at large with Bruce Desmond beating him by one vote. One vote. One vote. One vote. And that so, was after a recount. It can really make a difference. One vote. I know, you know, it's kind of like that stuff of Lord, but this is serious. This has happened in our city. One vote it has come down to. Sure. So you can make an impact. If you go out, if everybody in your house votes, if everybody on your block votes, and I don't know about you, but in my neighborhood where I've lived in Ward 4, I now live in Ward 3, you know, I am kind of one of the political people where my neighbors will come up to me and say, Carrie, who are you voting for? Mm -hmm. What's this guy all about? This mm -hmm. one knocked on my door. Who's this? You know, what signs are you putting up this year? And that's kind of an indicator. You can make a difference right. in your own neighborhood, and you should. Being, you know, doing what I do down here at the Media Center, I've been very, very careful about outwardly supporting candidates. And I always get the same response from during municipal elections. This is 10 years that I've been doing it now. When a candidate asks me to put up a sign, I'll say, you know what the Lynch rules are. I don't put the sign up until probably election day or the night before election day. And when my neighbors ask me who I'm voting for, I do tell them who I like, but I never tell them who I'm voting for. So maybe it's being a little wussy on that, but. I didn't release my endorsements. 
And I, I don't saw even, you as I yesterday. don't even really. Well, actually, it was this morning was that I put morning? it up. Yeah, yeah, I didn't put it up until this morning uh, because I take pretty seriously. Like, if you have a good chunk of folks that look to you for some political guidance, you're like you've got to be responsible sure. for it. And so, um, you know, it comes down to. Uh, having a lot of really great candidates. I live again in Ward 3, so we had great candidates. You know, you have Bob McWaters, you have Ben Ewan Campen, who is a wonderful up and comer. Um, when it came down, I mean, I was forced to make a decision too. And, you know, I think that Ben is bright and talented and young and full of energy. Bob McWaters, excellent on con constituent services. I mean, cannot be beat. So, really, you know, I am, I was blessed with an embarrassment of riches to have well, wonderful choices to be able to make. Now here's work. where the show is going to get good. I called the race in Ward 5 mm -hmm. for Nita Gang and, and um, Patone. You want to call the race oh, in 3? you're killing me. You're there killing you me. You hey. want me to call it in 3? Goodness. Call it in 3. Uh, I... There's only 15 minutes left. Okay. Um, I'm going to say I think Bob McWaters pulls this one out. Not from lack of effort or energy from Ben Ewan Campen. I think that Bob has excellent uh, name recognition within the ward. Um, from my neighbors who I talk to, and I, I live on Lowell Street, no shame in my game, come knock on my door, say hello, I'll offer you a nice tea. I spent a lot of time actually with Ben. Ben, I invited him in the house, sure. sat him down, had a Snapple. But when I have needed support, when I have called and reached out to my alderman, I got a call back from Bob within you know, two hours of needing help for a neighbor of mine. And because of that, you know, that is what you need in an alderman. You need your voice to be heard at City Hall. You need somebody who can help make things happen. Uh, and I think that Bob has demonstrated that he does that for uh, residents in our ward. That's why I felt comfortable supporting so him. So let's dissect it a little bit, not just in terms of the McWaters camp and race, but in terms of some of the other ward races. You have incumbent aldermen who are viewed as establishment candidates, Marion Houston in two, Bob McWaters in three, um, and then on the at-large scene, you have Bill White, Dennis Sullivan, Mary jo not so much Mary Jo because she's only into her second term, but Jack Conley especially, mm -hmm. being a 30-year vet of the political scene here in the city. So you have a new group of younger voters who have formed an organization called Our Revolution. Mm -hmm. And that's a nationwide organization that was started by, my words not carries, a bunch of very, very angry Bernie Sanders voters who thought that the Democratic Party had screwed up the 2016 election, um, and it kind of created two factions. So you have the Bernie Sanders group and you have the Hillary Clinton group. This Our Revolution national group and then statewide and then city groups grew out of that 2016 election. Now That's some true. could argue that the progressive Democrats of Somerville were the precursor to that and they've just kind of coalesced. So what you now have is younger, um, younger candidates, and I've gotten this personally from some of them, they don't necessarily tend to focus on the constituent service part of it. They're focusing, focusing on larger issues, social issues, um, injustice, um, development in the city, you know, all kinds of things that are creating difficulties for them when it comes to affordability of housing, cost of living in the city of Somerville. Um, I'm not quite sure. There was one candidate that I talked to who started to talk to me about student loan debt. Well, and here is here's where it gets challenging. Sure. Okay, I I appreciate and love the enthusiasm of our revolution and having more folks get in the process. I think that's great for democracy. When I was the chair of the Somerville Democratic City Committee, opening up our ward committee so that more people could get involved in the right. process was a priority of mine, um, much to the chagrin of many of my ward chairs. But you know, we decided to open up that process to make it available to new folks. You know, to kind of break up the bureaucracy and some of the the old guard, as it were, in sure. the city committee. And so when I take a look at our revolution, I like the fire. I like the new voices. However, with that, you know, comes some trickiness because, again, 
you know, you have Not to understand. Not trickiness. No, of that it is comes the from trickiness of, of, the, of the process. So yeah. when you're new to politics, when you're new to government, it can seem that fighting these ideological fights seems like an inspirational point that we are, we're going to come together and we're going to do this and fight for these big things. But the fact of the matter is, you're not going to be able to fight Donald Trump from the Somerville Board of Aldermen. You're not going to be able to fight Donald Trump from the Somerville School Committee. There are functions that these bodies need to take on, some very seriously local functions that they need to actually pay attention, pay attention to. to. And there are things that we need to do on the local level that are very important. So it makes me a little nervous when I hear folks talking about um, you know, I, I, at point I was I was hearing folks talk about nuclear weapons and some of these like larger issues, which I think are important. Yes. But so are the local functions of government and understanding the constituent services part. When a tree comes down in your neighborhood, when the sidewalk is cracked, when a water main breaks, when you're having a problem with response times with the police department, whatever it is. You need to have somebody who is focused on, okay, how do I make government work on this local level? And you have to have the finesse, Carrie. You have to know that, you know, municipal workers are not treated as, um, there's a term I'm going to use, they're not treated as subservient to an elected official. You're all part of the same team. You're part of the team that the voters have hired, either directly or indirectly, to govern our city, to protect us, to keep us moving ahead from, a, from an economic sustainability. All the issues that are out there that they talk about, I agree with, but don't forget what your job description is. Your job description is to do what a board, what an alderman is elected to do, or a school committee person is And you've got to understand to what that function is. And that is where we yeah. get a little bit tricky. Now, that being said, I don't want to beat up on our evolution because having this no. discussion, I think, no. is great because there are some folks who have been elected to the, these wonderful bodies that have been there and maybe have outlived their spark and their energy. And we need to make sure that they are either revitalized and find the passion once again to perform these important functions or they need to be replaced. So, so that is that is also you know a conversation that we should have as a community. So you went out on a limb. I agree with it. You went out on a limb and you called uh, the race in Ward 3. And I'll go out on a limb and I'll call the race in Ward 4. And I'll say that Jesse Klingen is going to um, win that race. He has been one of the hardest working candidates that I have witnessed in a long, long time. I've known Jesse since his days when he was involved with um, the opioid epidemic and started the, the, um, the organizations mm -hmm. of, um, you know, my, Somerville, overcoming, Somerville addiction. overcoming Addiction. Thank you very much. Somerville Overcoming Addiction. I knew, um, I knew Jesse and I knew of his, I met him probably six, seven years ago and I know what he has done in this city. I also know Omar Bukili. I know him as Joe's chief of staff. He left the city, he came back, he wanted to enter back into politics. I have not seen Omar since the day he appeared at the uh, Somerville Labor Coalition debate. So I, I'm not quite sure what happened with Omar, but if you were to ask me to call it just sheer from my observations of what's been taking place in four, I'd feel very comfortable calling it for Jesse Klingen. And I am going to be very forthright. I'm a Jesse Klingen fan. We have been friends for years. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to say decades because I am a young lady and I could not have possibly <laughs> known him for that long. But um, I think that Jesse is passionate. He lives and breathes not only Ward 4 but Somerville and truly cares a lot about what happens in the city. He's invested in the city. Um, he's not a guy who just came along out of the woodwork. This is a guy who has been working in our community, has been fighting for it for years and years. And so I'm very proud of the campaign that he's run. I'm, I'm proud of the coalition he has been able to bring together in Ward 4. Um, and frankly, 
I had a conversation with Jesse very early on in his race uh, because I'm, I'm a villain, I'm old school, you know, I've, having grown up here in the city, having my family, generations of my family again uh, from Somerville, Ward 4 is home to me and it is a very important place to me. It's my grandmother's ward, as I said to Jesse, and I, I want to see someone in that position who is going to take very good care of Ward 4 and well, advocate and fight for it because Winter we'll Hill deserves we'll it. We'll stay with Ward 4 up for just one second and for you folks who do not um, get involved in politics, the current Ward 4 Alderman, Tony LaFuent, um, or my hat is off to him and salute for his years of service. He decided not to run this year, which opened it up to two first-time candidates, which were Jesse and Omar Bukili. So my hat's off to both candidates in Ward 4 because you ran a very good, clean campaign. And I'm going to agree with you. I do think that Jesse will pull it out in Ward 4. Let's, um, I know that there are some people watching this on our streaming, mm -hmm. and they've been dying for one of us to call Ward 1. But you know what? I know both gentlemen. I have the uh, privilege of uh, moderating the debate in which they uh, entered into down at Connexion in uh, East Somerville. Uh, and the same night was the uh, contested school committee race down in Ward 1 uh, between Emily Ackman and uh, Ken Salvato. Um, I've known Matt McLaughlin for many, many years, and I knew of he and the McLaughlin boys uh, at one time the bane of anyone's existence down at Lexington Park. Uh, Matthew, um, uh, I did endorse Matt McLaughlin when he first ran for Alderman down at Ward 1. Um, I think Matt has run a very effective campaign, including a lot of the Our Revolution people who are very, very passionate about his candidacy. There are times when I wish Matt would stay off of Facebook, and there are times when I wish Matt would stop being the angry Alderman. Um, I, but I would say that Matt has run a very, very effective campaign with his volunteers, and I would be very surprised to see Elio LaRusso win Ward 1. Uh, you know, Elio's campaign has been uh, problematic for me, frankly, um, in light of, you know, again, Facebook coming into politics, some issues there. Um, I, I have felt that in the past his commentary around women, around immigrants, um, has been problematic, and that has been something that played into the campaign. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. I am hearing that in Ward 1 we are let's, having... Let's do it quickly because we're going to run out of time here. We're having incredible we're having turnout. We're having a blast. I'm going to call it for Matt McLaughlin. I think he does it. I'm going to call Joe Curtitoni for mayor. I think it happens. And for all you candidates for uh, at-large, you're just going to have to wait. For Greater Somerville, I'm Joe Lynch with my co-host tonight. Carrie Rodriguez. Be safe. Stay informed. See you next time.